So let's talk about the real case. Like, why would we do this? Well, I need to show you all the bad things so you don't do them. And now we're going to get to the good things. Because, you know, a little while ago we talked about diffusers. And so our diffuser looked like this. This was the actual diffuser, remember. And so I have oblique shock waves. They reflect, reflect, reflect. And then I have a little normal shock right here. And so at the end, my Mach number is much, much less than one. I have some sort of background pressure I have reached at this point. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add on our initial section, earlier section, onto this. So here we go. I have my test section, which I didn't do a very good job, my constant area test section. There we go. Where I have my test model going into it. Bleak shock coming off of that guy. And I have some initial reservoir pressure over here. So now if we're going to be analyzing this, I'll have some exit Mach number, which I know how to calculate, and some exit pressure right here. And then I would have to figure out, well, well how do all those oblique shock waves, followed by that really, really, really weak normal shock, change things? Now, this time I'm not going to do any calculations. Why? Because it would be really, really, really hard. Like, this is a place where you're going to have to go to simulations to find out the real performance, okay? Or experiment to find the real performance. But this is the better and more realistic scenario. However, I can still give you one really interesting idea beyond that. Because what you might realize, or you might not realize, is that there's actually two throats in this wind tunnel. There is this throat right here, which I'm going to call throat one. Yes, that's going to be throat one. And that one's going to be simply equal to A star. And then I'm going to have some second throat which is not equal to A star because it can't be. That's just how it happens right here. And you might be wondering, well, how are these two throats connected? Okay, how are they connected? Well, what do we know? Well, we do know that in this one right here, the Mach number should be equal to one. We don't necessarily know if that's the case in the second one, but you know, we know it's gonna be slow, but it's not gonna be less than, it's not gonna be equal to one. But what we probably know is that the mass flow through throat one must be equal to the mass flow through throat two. Okay, and mass flow is equal to my density, whoop, there's the tail, times my velocity times my area. So let's plug it in there. So density one, velocity one, area one, is equal to density 2, velocity 2, area 2. We got it. It's looking good. Now we need to remember that for all the 1 properties, these are our star properties when the Mach number equals 1. And so in that case, that means that u1 will be equal to a star. So I can rewrite that a little bit. I can say, okay, well, this is row one star now, a one star, area one. You're like, why is it a one star, not just a star? Remember that this is because um, it depends on the temperature on what your actual speed of sound is. So it could change other places. And that's gonna be equal to row two, that's one a one throw right there u2 a throat 2. Okay, so I can bring these around and I can say, well, area throat 2 over area throat 1, this ratio I need to have to make this supersonic wind tunnel work is going to be equal to my density 1 star over a1 star. 
sorry, E1 star, over density 2 star. Let's see here. U2. Okay. Ah. Hmm. But we still need to simplify this more. We need to simplify it more. Hmm. So one thing we might realize or might be able to assume is, let's assume still right, there we go. Let's assume here that M2 is also equal to 1. So in that second throat, we're going to say that it's also equal to 1. Well, if that's the case, that lets me say that area throat 2 over area throat 1 is equal to density 1 star over density 2 star. I already added the star by accident. That's okay. I make mistakes. And I have a 2 star and a 1 star. Beautiful. Okay. So we're doing good here. But there's still, you know, I still could feel like I could simplify this more. So is there any way I can figure out the relationship between these two? Well, remember that your speed of sound is simply equal to square root of gamma RT. And also remember that T naught is 1 is equal to T naught 2 is a constant even through a shock wave, even through an expansion band, it's always a constant. And so if they're both, you know, going Mach 1, then I can actually say that A1 star is equal to A2 star because there's nothing to change the temperature. And so if I do that, I get a really nice little equation here. That tells me my area throat 2 over my area throat 1 is going to be equal to density 1 star over density 2 star. I can also tell from the ideal gas law that this would be equal to, make sure I do it right, yes, P1 star over P2 star. And I can also tell, using our isentropic relation equations, that would mean that this is equal to P naught 1 over P naught 2. Okay. Whew. So we got there in the end. We figured out this relationship between the two throats. And what does it tell us? Well, we know that P naught 2 is always less than P naught 1, which means that my second throat must always be more than my first throat. It has to be. It will never be the same unless you have a perfectly isentropic diffuser. Um, and we just have to go from there. So, with this, we found a way of relating and figuring out how we can begin to design this wind tunnel. Now, if I'm trying to design this wind tunnel, you realize I need to know this pressure ratio to start. And so if I don't know that pressure ratio, I, you know, I can't find out what the second throat should be. But you don't need to worry about that too much. So in real design, let's just do this real design. is not known.
And so we're just going to assume a normal shock wave in that case. Now, in doing that, what you're going to realize is that you have way too big. Your second threat will be much bigger than it needs to be. And so from there, you can then do more simulations or refine it further to figure out what it actually needs to be. So that's it for this. Um, before we quit this one, though, let's do one real, real quick supersonic wind tunnel calculation, okay? So we're going to just do a preliminary design here and figure out what it's going to be. Um, and I'm going to put that into a new, yeah, I'll put that on a new board right now because it's a little bit slow on this one. Okay. So... Here's my supersonic wind tunnel. And I know that I want to have a Mach number right here that's equal to two. And so I want to find out what is the ratio of my throats here to get that Mach number and to make it work properly. Now, remember that's all based on this P naught two over here and P naught one over here. But I don't know what P02 is. Like I don't know, because I haven't designed it yet, exactly how these shock waves are going to happen and what P02 will actually end up being. And so I need to make sure that at the very least it will run, which means I'm going to go for the max case scenario. So if I know nothing else, I'm going to assume normal shock. Okay, we're just going to do the best case scenario. I'll start the worst case scenario. So this will make my area of throat 2 at its maximum, but it will run and then I can refine it from there. I can do simulations, I can iterate until finally I get what I need. So if I'm going to do that, then I need to get P naught 2 over P naught 1 for a normal shock. So I'm going to go to Appendix B. And for a Mach number that equals 2, let's find P02 over P01 and figure out what it equals. Okay, here we are in our normal shock tables. Let's go down to a Mach number of 2. Whoop, frozen me again. There we go. So I need 0.7, or my, my pressure ratio would be 0.72. Zero 0.09, right there, for a Mach number of 2, 0.7209. Okay, so I get that in this worst case scenario, my pressure ratio would be 0.7209, and so from that I can figure out what the ratio of my throats would be. So AT2 over AT1 would be equal to P01 over P02, which would be equal to 1 over 7.209, which is a ratio of, oops, not 7.209, whoo, 0 0.7209, people, 0 0.7209. And that would be equal to 1.387. There you go. So that would be my first blush design for this wind tunnel. And I would have to do a lot more after that to get things going. Oh, cool. That's it. Hopefully this helped you. I'll see you next time.